Welcome to our study today on spiritual names. Now I've got the sign here, spirit names, because it made the print really small when I wrote spiritual across the page there. So this means spiritual names. That's what we're going to study, spiritual names. Now, when Jesus was showing John the Apostle about the two witnesses in the book of Revelation, he revealed that there are spiritual names for certain items. I'll show you what I mean. In Revelation 8, 11, it says their dead bodies, talking about the two witnesses, will lie in the street of the great city. Okay, so he's giving us a clue. The two witnesses' dead bodies will be lying in the street of the great city. Now it gets really interesting. Interesting because he says, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Not humanly. This is not the city of Sodom, humanly speaking. This is not the city of Egypt, humanly speaking. And then the end of that verse says, this is Revelation 11, 8. The end of the verse says, where also our Lord was crucified. Okay, there can, there can only be one city where Jesus was crucified. That's the city of Jerusalem. So, what we've got is Jesus tells us in the book of Revelation, which is New Testament writing, He tells us that He has spiritual names that He calls things for a purpose. And He wants us to know the purpose. And He wants us to know that He has spiritual names. Now, we, we understand physical names and, and we have nicknames because in, in the school, when you go to school, the kids make up nicknames with your last name, your first name, or, or if you wear glasses, they, you know, they make up nicknames, right? And it's like, it's not a real name, it's a sort of symbolic name. Well, God is using spiritual names from time to time for a purpose, and He wants us to know that purpose. So, why, why does God do this to New Testament Christians? Okay, let's look in the Old Testament for some answers. God spoke this same way, only more graphically, in Jeremiah 23, verse 14. It says, <clears throat> Jeremiah 23, verse 14, He says, I have seen a horrible thing in the prophets of Jerusalem. Now, prophets in the Old Testament were the religious teachers. So, God is saying, Jeremiah 23, 14, I, God speaking, have seen a horrible thing in the teachers of people at Jerusalem. They, the teachers, who should be teaching God's ways, Ten Commandments and so on, they commit adultery. That's breaking one of the, one of the Ten Commandments. The teachers who are supposed to teach righteousness are, are actually practicing breaking God's law. They walk in lies. That's breaking another one of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not bear false witness. They also strengthen the hands of the evildoers so that no one turns back from wickedness. Okay, the, the teachers, the prophets in Jerusalem are supposed to turn people back from wickedness. But what's happening? No one's turning them back because the prophets, the teachers are wicked themselves. So then the rest of this verse, verse 14, Jeremiah 23, 14, all of them are like Sodom to me. So Jesus is revealing through Old Testament scripture, he's revealing that the spiritual name was being used back in Jeremiah's day to tell the Israelites, to tell those in Jerusalem that because of your behavior, the way you're living your life, you are like Sodom was to me and the inhabitants of Gomorrah. So God is saying, look, you think you're righteous Jerusalem, but you're acting like unrighteous Sodom and Gomorrah. Now Sodom's wickedness got so bad that God destroyed it in a similar fashion to Hiroshima 
in, in World War II, I don't know if you've seen the pictures of this, but after the atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima in Japan, it was a huge nuclear fireball explosion, or atomic, I said nuclear, it's atomic explosion, and it burned and vaporized and leveled the buildings and killed all the people in a huge circle around the center of the bomb. Well, that's kind of like it was in the day of Sodom, the actual human city. But God is using a spiritual, he's taking the, the physical name of the city of Sodom, and now he's using it throughout history into the New Testament. We saw that in the book of Revelation. And he's using it as a symbol of the wickedness of Jerusalem when they're supposed to be a righteous city. All right, in Genesis 19, 24, it says, And the Lord rained brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah and the Lord, from the Lord out of, out of the heavens. So this, this tremendous fire and brimstone came out of the heavens. Then a little later in Genesis 19, 28, then it says, Then he looked, or then Abraham looked towards Sodom and Gomorrah, and to all the, plan, the land of the plain, and he saw, and behold, the smoke of the land, which went up like the smoke of a furnace. Well, on our way coming here today, we looked up on the horizon over the trees, and there was smoke going up, or steam going up, just rising up into the sky. And that's what Abraham saw when he looked towards Sodom, because when God rained the fire and the brimstone down, he leveled, he burned, he torched the whole city, and the smoke of all the burning dwellings and so on was rising and rising. So Sodom was destroyed for its extreme wickedness. And when God calls Jerusalem by the name of Sodom, using spiritual names, he is showing the Israelites what he thinks of their wickedness. Now, a lot of in school people people call other kids names just just to be abusive, just to be nasty, just to put them down. Well, God is using spiritual names to tell us messages that we're behaving badly, very wickedly, like Sodom back in the old days. And then he, of course, he um, he mentions Egypt. Well, I brought this other sign along here. And this one <clears throat> reads, okay, spiritual names show how God thinks. So when you examine the spiritual name, when you evaluate what he has said, what he's thinking, you get a better, clearer picture of what he's thinking, what he's saying, what the message and the learning we're supposed to get from it. All right, here in Isaiah 19, verse 1. The Lord will come into Egypt. The idols of Egypt will totter. Egypt had way more than 80 idols that they worshipped. They worshipped the Nile. They worshipped the sun god. They worshipped the moon god. They worshipped beetles. They worshipped frogs. They, you know, there were more than 80 gods, so I can't list them all. So they, they, they had lots and lots of idols that the Egyptians worshipped. He says, this is Isaiah 19.1, the Lord will come into Egypt and the idols of Egypt will totter in his presence and the heart of Egypt will melt in its midst because God is so great and so powerful. Down to verse 3, Isaiah 19, 3. The spirit of Egypt, their idol worship spirit, will fail in the midst. I, God speaking, I will destroy their counsel. I'm going to bring it to an end, he says. So... And they will consult their idols and their charmers and their mediums and the sorcerers. And nothing is going to happen. It's going to be a failing. You know, they'll go back to their idols. They'll go back to their charmers. They'll go back to their mediums. They'll go to their sorcerers. It will all come to an end because God is going to destroy it. So God crushed Egypt back in the days of Exodus. And God is going to crush Egypt again. If you're looking at the newspapers and you're seeing where Jerusalem, Egypt is, what Egypt is doing, 
you can know from Scripture that God is going to crush Egypt once more in the near future. Now, in Isaiah chapter 57, God reveals his thinking again concerning Israel and their practice of idol worship. So, when we saw that first verse in, uh, in Revelation, and, and God called Jerusalem spiritually Sodom and spiritually Egypt, Sodom had great wickedness. The Israelites in Jerusalem were living and practicing great wickedness. Egypt was practicing idol worship. It was, it was a renowned for idol. When God did the ten plagues against Egypt, He was destroying, He was, he was turning their gods, the beetles and the frogs, <laughs> against them and making them look really foolish by the way He did the plagues. Okay, in Isaiah 57, 13, God speaking, when you cry out, when you cry out to God, let your collection of idols deliver you. Now, God is talking to the Israelites back in Isaiah's day, but the wind will carry them all away. They just get blown away. A breath will take them. But, on the other hand, he who puts his trust in me, in the God of Jacob, will possess the land and shall inherit my holy mountain. So, He's saying, you're idol worshippers. You people, you Israelites living in Jerusalem, you become idol worshippers when I told you don't be idol worshippers. So what we see is two approaches in this one verse, verse 13 of Isaiah 57. We see people who trust in their idols, which is something you put before God Almighty. And there's the other people who trust in God Almighty with nothing in between. And they get two end results. God's going to bless those who trust in Him. And then God is going to destroy those who don't. Now again in Jeremiah chapter 2, God focuses on Israel turning in towards idol worship. Jeremiah 2.5, Thus saith the Lord, what, just, what injustice have your fathers found in me? So he's, he's telling Israelites, What injustice have your fathers found in me? that they have gone far from me and have followed idols and have become idolaters. So, so now when we look at Revelation and we see him call Jerusalem with a spiritual name of Egypt, who were great idolaters, they worshiped all kinds of gods that were no gods, right? He's making a reference to their idolatry, which is sinful and against God and against his plans. So, what we see is God uses spiritual names to show people what He's thinking about their practices, how they live their life. Now, if you go back and you think, okay, Jeremiah, that's Old Testament, that's, that's the Israelites who were worshipping idols back in Jeremiah's day. But the New Testament, the book of Revelation, was written in 95 AD by John the Apostle, 65 years after the New Testament era had begun. So Jesus is telling, and, and he's talking about a period of time 2,000 years later. So he's talking about Jerusalem and the Israelites in Jerusalem for the next 2,000 years after Christ dies. And he says, I have gone to calling the city of Jerusalem, which should have been my prized possession, I have gone to calling it by a spiritual name so that I can demonstrate to you what I'm thinking about the way you treat me, and I'm calling Jerusalem Sodom and Egypt for the purpose of waking you people up and getting you back on the ball. So for our lives to be pleasing in God's sight, we each need to learn and heed what God is thinking 